What's up, ladies and gents? It's your boy, Lou Streets, and I'm back with another segment of LS Vision. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Now, before we get started, I know you might not recognize me at the moment, but this is your normal host. Even though I resemble a werewolf right now, can't get in touch with my barber. Coronavirus season, it is what it is. But you know what? The content still calls. I hope you guys are out there being safe, and we get through this together as soon as possible. Now, as far as this particular video, I want to add to the How to Create Content series, where we focus specifically on the Mac and trying to improve the quality of your game and content and the presentation as well. Now, with this particular video, what I'm going to do is show you guys my Elgato settings to get the best optimized performance out of your software. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so pretty much all we're doing is changing a handful of settings to um, relieve stress on your CPU usage. And so we're going to start with this top uh, menu over here in the top right as far as the settings go. So we're going to click that. Let's take a look at the game capture HD preferences. So what we have here is um, a small menu of things that we want to change. So we have enable flashback recording. When you first purchase your Elgato, that's going to be on automatically. Turn that off. And what that does is it pretty much background records. Um, so if you have like a like a wow moment that you want to capture um, or when you were just playing the game inside your Elgato and you have like an amazing moment but you weren't recording, it's meant for you to be able to go back and mark that spot and grab that clip. But I mean, if you're not recording intentionally, um, then you're not really trying to capture footage at the moment anyway. So I would rather leave this off because this does strain the hell out of your CPU. So make sure that you turn that off. Um, the next thing would be use a foot switch to uh, toggle the capture. I don't have one of those and I mean it's super easy to come right down here and press the record button to the bottom left so that's really irrelevant. Um, the next one is enable stream command. Now you definitely want this on, I'm going to show you why. If I was to click this and turn it off, you notice my scenes disappear down here at the bottom. All of my scenes are gone. So now I can't do anything with the stream, I can't put on any overlays. So you definitely want to have this on and I'll even show you a quick preview of it. Let's open this up. I'm turning on my preview. So you see how my webcam is down here, my information is down bottom. Let's go click turn enable stream command off and watch what happens. You see that? Now the game still looks amazing but all of my customization is gone. So you always want to have this on because this is the key to representing yourself and representing your stream. So always keep enable stream command on. Let's turn the preview back off. Okay. The next setting we're going to go to is right here underneath um, the wheel that we just clicked earlier. We have the Elgato Game Capture HD 60 tab and you see it says 1080p uh, 60. So if you notice right here in this blank area, if you ever have frame drops, they'll pop up right here. It'll be like a yellow box and it'll say, you know, 51, 52, 53. And it'll catch back up pretty quickly. But if you're putting a lot of stress on your CPU, having other apps open, um, having on too many previews and too many playbacks at the same time then you'll start losing frames and when you get down to like the 30s and 40s you're pretty much ruining your footage at that point and not even making it useful um, let's see so let's go into this menu so we click the two to the, the little toolbox here and the first thing that we have is our capture settings so we have input device I keep mine's on other you they have consoles and stuff up here but it's irrelevant I keep mine's on other it works totally fine so I have no issue with that you can put it on your specific console if you like to but I keep it on other um the input HDMI of course you would want that to be HDMI that's the whole entire point of buying an Elgato um, an HDMI out from your console and to your Elgato to your computer and back to send a signal so you definitely want to keep this on HDMI leave analog audio off you would rather keep that as digital audio um, HDMI color range I'll leave it on expanded if you put it on standard you'll just notice um, you'll lose some coloring I could show you show it to you in the preview but it's really not a factor just keep it on expanded because you obviously want the full range of your picture as far as color and lighting goes um, your profile HD 1080 this goes without saying that you want this on 1080 it's not much of a reason to buy an Elgato game capture if you're going to um, have it at 720 or anything less than that um, you definitely want to keep this box clicked with the allow 60 frames per second that's just to give you the best out of your picture now the next thing is quality now I've seen some places when I was trying to learn and get my stuff up and going that use good or better I like to keep mine on best because I want the bang for my buck of what I paid for. Um, you can go down in quality, but the farther you go to the left, um, the more grainy things will get. It'll still look solid, but it just won't be super, super, super sharp. And it could be a distraction for your viewer when you're creating content or when you're streaming. Um, as far as the crop, I don't keep a crop on. All of these boxes down here would convert standard definition, stretch standard definition, blah, 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 blah. I don't mark any of these. You can leave all those default, just leave them empty. 
go to your picture all the settings straight down the middle with brightness contrast saturation and you you can customize those things if you like to i have no problem with my default elgato picture so i've never touched them since day one audio um you can have it at zero I don't want you to risk having bleed into your viewers ears as far as like you getting loud and maybe like the mic picking up too much so keep that around negative six you can tamper with that that's for personal customization but at the end of the day i keep mine around the negative six area right between zero and negative 12 so you should do the same you'll be fine profiles is irrelevant this is just pretty much where your things are going once you uh record them and send them on out i haven't changed anything on my profiles or added any because i'm the only person using my elgato if you're in a family uh setting with this then maybe you might want to change profiles personally i never will with mine i don't let anybody touch my stuff so next one game audio you can keep that at negative 15 and, and and edit from there um what i like to do is i'll record my commentary in a third party app like garage band which you all would have with your max because it comes with it so i like to keep my game audio at negative 15 i'll record in a third party app of garage band and i'll sync that up and blend that together if you guys don't know how to do that i'll put a video card up in the top right right about now and it'll be a video linking to show you how to sync your audio if you don't know how to do so but um i'm gonna get i'm gonna say this under the impression that you do know how to isolate your audio and edit your levels but if you don't please click that video card so i like to keep my gaming audio around negative 15. um it works for most games the only game is too loud for that is dragon ball fighters but you can pretty much do that of your own preference um next thing live streaming so what we have with live streaming in elgato is we have uh multiple um apps that you can use and add in so we have twitch youtube ustream Restream Facebook gaming and then you have a custom URL if you if you're using something like mixer Which I did at one time. So here's a cool feature when you have something that's already in here like twitch YouTube, etc I use twitch right now. So This area right here represents your stream title and this represents the game you're playing So let's open up my my uh, twitch right quick So if you look at the bottom left, we have Elgato lesson and Dragon Ball fighters So I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna change this to um, let's change this to LSV tutorial. Oops, I spelled it wrong. Coronavirus got me, got me spelling stupid. Um, LSV tutorial, and then we're gonna put this at Mortal. Let's see, Mortal Kombat 11. So we have Mortal Kombat 11, right? So if you look over here to the right, there's this up arrow. It's like a share arrow. So if I was to click this, and then you go look, now it says Mortal Kombat 11 instead of Dragon Ball Fighters. This says Elgato Lesson, right? Let's go back over here. If I click this arrow up, let's go back to Twitch, and boom, now it says LSV Tutorial. So that's just a cool little feature that you can name your stream from inside the app, which is pretty awesome. Next thing we have is the live commentary. Now, if you notice, I keep this at three, and I have my input, which is my Yeti stereo microphone on input two. Now, you see the level isn't moving even though I'm talking to you guys. Let me open up this toolbox. We have threshold and attenuation. Now with these two things, what it pretty much does is if you get too loud, it likes to cap you out so you don't bleed into your listeners ears. And then we also have where it raises you up if um, if you're too low and it's like to make your listeners be able to hear you. But these settings are mainly for when you're streaming. That's that live commentary. As I said earlier, recording the third party app, I would never record content within this same thing because then you can't edit the commentary separate of the gaming audio. This is mainly for streaming. Now, in order for this to enable, you need to come down here to the commentary button. If I click this button, now we take a look over here, and you see how the levels are jumping up. Um, I think because of the fact that I have it open with the game, with the app already being open, I jumped into this. It's super loud. If I was to come down, click this button, you see it goes off. Only click this on when you're streaming. If you're not streaming, there's no real reason to have this on unless you want to record with your commentary and your gaming audio together but then just know that afterwards you can't really edit anything separate so it's all kind of one track so um this is only for streaming when you want to have this on so let's turn that back off now um the last thing that's that's pretty much the most important thing as far as my opinion is when it comes to putting strain on your cpu you don't have to have your preview on if you look preview disabled live streaming will still continue to operate in the background that goes the same for when you're recording this is a big deal, especially if you have a computer that can't really handle what you're doing or is like right on the brink. So my old computer was a, was an, uh, my old iMac was an eight gig 
i5 processor and it could handle it but it could barely barely handle it so like if i had the preview on um over time when i was recording with the preview on i would get frame drops that would pop up in this area right here now my new computer i just upgraded to about two weeks ago is a 16 gig uh 16 gig ram but an i7 processor so it's a beast it can totally handle it so what i like to do is keep my preview off now if i turn it on you see here we are i'm talking to you guys you see we have mortal kombat on now what i'm going to do is turn the preview off i'm going to record for five seconds i'm going to have scorpion jumping just like this because i'm holding controller i'll have him jump forward so let's turn the preview off let's press record i'm flipping forward back and forth forward back and forth now let's stop the record we're gonna go take a look over here at the edit tab where we just recorded that and let's press play and see what we got and as you can see it looks great looks totally fine um, you have me down here in the right corner with my uh, webcam up so this is everything that's displayed but you see we're not showing it right now so it just takes a little bit of a little bit of stress off your computer and at the same time you still can record still can get on the same things um, as far as quality goes and you can also do this when you're streaming so I mean either way you can always just keep this off and these are like the main settings to get the best optimization out of your Elgato if your computer can handle it then it's like a piece of cake in the background if your computer can barely handle the software then turning these things off will just make that little bit of difference between you getting 60 frames and you getting 54 53 frames or something like that now if you would like to record in 30 frames that's cool because it won't put too much strain on your computer but then just know you're losing some quality and i'm sure you didn't spend close to 200 dollars on a game capture to lose quality so with that being said i'm gonna wrap this video up so just one small quick time we're gonna run through these settings one more time let's turn the preview back off up here let's make sure that we keep enable flashback recording off because we don't want background rendering to be happening Keep enable stream command on so you can control your scenes down bottom. If you click it off, you lose all those scenes. So you always want to have that on. Um, and then when it comes to your capture settings, we want to keep this at best. Keep this at HD 1080. Allow 60 frames per second checked. Your input device can be other. Your input can be HDMI. We just mainly want those things. And then you keep your preview off and you'll be good to go. Um, so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. If you guys did like it, please hit the like button for me and of course hit subscribe. I'll be back in the future with more how to create a content series. So next time, it's your boy Louie, I am out. Peace.